Yes, yes, y'all. To the streets, y'all. It's GB, y'all. And we don't stop. Yes, yes, y'all. To the streets, y'all. It's GB, y'all. And we don't stop. Give it up for the invincible. This H-Town finest. The GB, the general. The street shit, the timers. The motherfucking criminals. See, we keep it grimy. You niggas. Hello, and welcome to the Online Strength Coach Podcast, episode 89. Today's topic comes from a question on Instagram from Chieftain Duke. The question is as follows. Hi Mark, you don't know me, but I've listened to a lot of your podcast and follow the Scottish powerlifting results, so know your results, etc. I've got a question, or maybe a topic you could cover in a podcast. I'm sure I've heard you say, can't remember where, that you consider the squat a strength building exercise and the deadlift a strength testing exercise. Your Operation 700 program seems seems to go against this idea. I personally think this is right, but only for certain people. I struggle with deadlift. In In the past, my best deadlift progress has been when I've concentrated on squat and deadlifted minimally. When I've tried to concentrate on deadlift progress, both stall. Do you think this is purely genetics and certain people can handle the greater deadlifting volume and vice versa? Not sure how, you, how to get that into a topic, but would like to hear your thoughts on it regardless. Cheers, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for the question, Duke, I guess I'll call you. Um, you've heard it on the podcast and probably possibly also on blog posts from the past. And I, I still would say that's probably correct. Um, especially the way a lot of people train deadlift where they just kind of pull pull the bar up and don't really pay too much attention to their shape or their form. And I think that's where a lot of people come across problems in the deadlift is that they, they're too quick to load or they don't brace properly through the lower back. And they just let themselves pull with any old form. And that's basically where most of the opinions come from. That the deadlift is a highly fatiguing, highly CNS fatiguing exercise. And should only be done once every blue moon. Because people just pull heavy with shit form. And as we've discussed uh, at length previously. This causes a lot of dons and muscles aren't really acted to be prime movers it causes a lot of discomfort through muscle spasm and other mechanisms uh, through, of the, muscul- the, the musculature of the lower back it's absolutely fuck all to do with the um, central nervous system it's because people just pull with incorrect technique or poor form and that just leads to excessive amount of fatigue it's like if you do any exercise if you're to squat with uh, if you're to squat heavy with bad technique you'd wake up the next day sore in places that you might not necessarily be sore in like your back, for example, uh, it's pretty much the same same kind of idea. So I think from listening to your question, uh, I think probably where you're finding the problems with trying to up your deadlift, uh, whilst maybe not focus on the squat so much, is probably you're trying to either going you going into like a higher frequency deadlifting routine and doing it too heavy is possible one scenario another scenario is you're jumping on a program like Ed Cohen or Philippi routine which can be fairly hit and miss although the frequency on that program is low another scenario is maybe you're looking to apply a program like Russian squat routine which can work for deadlift for some people but for the vast majority of people even like the two day version, like the Russian Squat Masters, that's probably going to be a lot of volume for people to maintain a good technique through deadlift. And it starts off at a very heavy percentage for someone who doesn't have good technique with deadlift. Like it's 80% basically, which is not really a, a place you can start and learn new habits with an exercise like deadlift. And what I think you could try doing. And something that has worked very well for me is if you were to try maybe a two time week frequency and just start at very, very lightweight, so like 50%, 
and just do a reasonable amount of volume. So a reasonable amount of volume for a deadlift session is like anywhere from 15 to 25 reps. So that could be made up of five sets of three, five sets of five, or any any way you want to make it up. I would normally encourage people to keep deadlift uh, reps down if you're trying to concentrate on fatigue and being fresh. I try to keep the reps to three and below. Basically, it just lets me concentrate on every pull. Uh, you don't you don't really want to be going in, especially if you're trying to learn how to brace your back properly and find where the sweet spot is for your hips to pull from. Then you want to keep the reps low because you want to keep the quality high um, and, and the load light to start with. And I would maybe over the, the space of 10 weeks just slowly add weight. So in, like a really slow way of doing it, maybe something to think about might be to start at fifty percent week one five sets three week t- so fifty percent uh, sorry start at fifty percent load two times a week frequency week one five sets three both session week two five sets of four week three five sets of five bump it up ten percent so sixty percent start the same progression again so the same way five three five four five five so you're building volume with that percentage and then the next uh, wave go to seventy percent. So by the end of it, you're doing 70% of your old max with 5 to 5, spending the whole time just concentrating on position and concentrating on uh, technique more than you're concentrating on actually just trying to overload deadlift. Uh, chances are, and I think this probably for a lot of lifters is, their deadlift technique is inefficient. They don't utilize, uh, they don't brace their back properly off the floor. They, when fatigue sets in, so when it, say it's a 6RM set or it's a 531 set by about rep 2 of the set rounding's crap in they're no longer trying to set themselves up properly from the floor they're just trying to rip it off the floor as hard as they can and then they're just like they're getting blown out when they could have kept going so for example if you keep if you learn good technique and keep good technique and utilize the muscles of the knee and the hip to lift the weight rather than the muscles of the lower back then what? Then you, then you'll probably find you're able to lift uh, the same weight for much more reps. Are you able to ultimately lift, lift more weight because you're utilizing moving muscles, prime movers, glutes, quadriceps, as hamstrings, as opposed to trying to utilize the postural musculature of the lower back, quadriceps lumbari, or at your spiny, which can they can act as synergists, but they're not meant to act as prime movers. It's not their function in life. Their functional life is to hold posture and to articulate. Um, they're primarily slow twitch in nature, uh, and they act best isometrically, as in they act best in holding the position. And um, so, like a simple little, uh, a simple little nine week program like that, where you just stick at an arbitrary percentage, accumulate volume over three week period, drop the volume down again, up the intensity, accumulate volume over three weeks. Do the same. And then off the back of that, then maybe you want to try a bit more of an overloading routine or just continue the same thing, bring on the 80%. So if you can do 80% for five sets of five on deadlift two days a week and come away without like a sore back, then my money would be that your deadlift will increase. And you don't have to necessarily take stop training squat as well because you're taking a, a higher a higher frequency moderate uh, intensity building volume approach you're going to be able to train squat alongside it quite happily Um, so that's that's basically where I come from when it comes to um, the way deadlift is a test of strength rather than an exercise to build strength from my opinion is that people don't utilise it as a strength building exercise they just kind of see how heavy they can go every time they touch a bar and that's why people become of the opinion that you can only do it because it's a whole body lift and because of the leverages involved you can utilize heavier weights than you can in a squat or a front squat you can lift more more load and when things go wrong the load goes to the lower back and that that accumulates more fatigue than you need to it involves a lot more muscle spasm than you need to uh, muscle spasm muscle cramp or signs of fatigue within the muscle which are high when you utilize incorrect form and correct technique and use muscles that are meant to act isometrically as concentric eccentric movers. 
which typically doesn't happen in squat, front squat, bench press, chin ups, exercise of that nature. Plus the, like I've mentioned before, the concentric only nature of the exercise also makes it a different kind of animal. It becomes more difficult to perform good technique because there's no cueing. Uh, in the squat, cueing is when you sit down into the squat, then you can feel the bar, you can feel the bar path, you can kind of build tension through the muscles or you can place your hips where you want them. You have an opportunity to dictate where the bar is going to go and then when you finally act on the bar concentrically, you can do so in a better position because you've been able to cue it up. And typically, because you're stronger eccentrically, when you take a load down, you've got more control on it. On it. So if you were to do a top-down deadlift, for instance, you can normally find the correct uh, bar path. You normally find a good line to go down, a more efficient bar path, and because you're going down eccentrically. Uh, your muscles are 120% stronger eccentrically than they are concentrically, typically, which allows you that extra amount of control as you lower the weight down. You're more, when you're in more, more control, um, you can cue the weight a bit better. So if you ever... You've never tried top down deadlift, that's just like like a touch and go deadlift or an RDL where you touch the floor and come back up. Try it, you'll actually probably feel that you'll, within the rep two or three, you'll find a more efficient bar path than you might have done just from the just from uh, the bottom up on a traditional deadlift. Other things to try, um, technique wise, pause deadlift, uh, pause at the knee, certainly help my technique quite a lot. It can be very useful if you find lockout troublesome or if your technique is not great towards lockout, pause deadlift at the knees, fantastic exercise. Something like a deficit def- deficit deadlift can really help um, cue you how to break the bar from the floor, utilizing your legs. It can also help you find that more efficient bar path. Um, so there's different ways of approaching it, variation is very good. I would probably just start off with upping the frequency, bringing the intensity down, and just giving yourself the chance, the, the volume and the time to practice the movement and get more efficient and get better at it. The best thing to do for a while is learn how to brace correctly. And when you can brace correctly through the lift, you'll find it's much more trainable. There's reasons why guys like uh, Mike Tushner, even Blaise Sumner can train. They're like excellent lifters, elite lifters, 900 plus totalers. Uh, and they can train deadlift two, three, four, five times a week. There's a reason for that because they deadlift, one, one they don't deadlift to destruction when they lift uh, and they also have good efficient technique which allows them to train the lift a lot more than the vast majority of lifters you'll see okay well that'll, that'll conclude this episode thanks very much for the question thought it was quite interesting hope I've answered your question or you found it useful and um, if you'd like to if you'd like me to answer your question for a topic you can shoot me a message on Instagram Facebook you find me on Facebook castironstrength.com Find me on Instagram, online strength coach. You can shoot me an email, speedpowerperformance.gmail.com, or you can just leave a comment on the website, online strengthcoach.com forward slash podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Hopefully, I'll catch you soon for episode 90 of the Online Strength Coach. Thank you very much. I've been Mark, and I'll catch you soon. Cheers. Fuck Paul and the rest of y'all. I'm the little motherfucker with the big dick swinging.